Today let's fix some drywall with a butterfly patch. Unbelievable. Let's fix that with a butterfly patch. All right guys, we're gonna get right into the repair. The first thing I'm gonna do is try and figure out how big the damage is on the back side of this wall. So I'm just reaching through and trying to figure out how far back it goes, and I'm just gonna mark off everything that I feel. So I'm gonna go through and make these four markings, and I'll go ahead and connect all these lines for you so you see how big this patch actually needs to be. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and measure it out. I'm measuring three by four on this patch, so I'm gonna go at least a couple inches bigger on the piece of drywall. So for this three by four patch, I would at least need to have a piece of drywall that's five by six. To go a couple inches bigger would give us a one inch, uh, one inch piece of paper going all the way around the perimeter. So you wanna make sure you have your drywall cut big enough. Once I did that, I just marked off that three by four patch. I actually made it a little bit bigger than that on the uh, back side of this piece and tried to make it as centered as possible. And I'm cutting again on the back side of this drywall. You want our patch to be on the back side when we're uh, cutting this. Once I'm done cutting it, all I'm doing is you see me breaking those lines and I'm just gonna peel off that drywall and leaving the front paper on the uh, patch itself. All right, now that we have that done, we're just gonna make sure to clean up any edges that might be uh, a little bit too jagged. And then especially if there's any uh, bumps or pieces of drywall left on the brown paper, you wanna make sure to get that nice and smooth because it'll uh, help you out later when you're floating for it to be as flat as possible. Now that we're done with that, all we're gonna do is make a small mark on the top so we know which way it goes later. And we're just gonna put it on the right spot on the wall and trace around our new patch. So our next step will be to cut out the hole out of the drywall. So I'm just gonna trace out my marks just a little bit more and I'm gonna use an oscillating tool to cut out this piece of drywall. But if you just had a utility blade, you could just use that. Okay, all I'm doing here is just doing a dry run with our patch, making sure everything fits well. If yours didn't, just go ahead and make whatever adjustments you need to. And all I'm doing right now is chamfering that edge. All that means is I'm just cutting around a 45 degree angle on the front side, just to make sure everything is nice and smooth because the saw that I used will cause it to blow out just a little bit and we want everything to sit as flat as possible. All right, it's time for me to mix up my mud. I'm gonna use a quarter of a cup here. So I have a quarter of a cup of water and I'm actually gonna add this to a Ziploc bag, which is an unconventional way of mixing up mud, but it does make it very easy. I have a really good video on this. It's a no float drywall repair. That's one of my last videos I made. So if floating out drywall intimidates you, I would recommend checking out that video. So all I'm gonna do is now add two of my measurements of the mud. I'm using a five minute mud in this and you would probably want to use something more like a 20 minute mud if you haven't done a lot of drywall before. Once I know it's very well mixed we're going to go ahead and pipe it straight out of the uh, Ziploc bag. I'm going to pipe all around the perimeter of the hole in the wall and then you'll see me also go all the way around the patch itself and just make sure everything is very well covered with the mud because it's essentially the glue that's going to hold our patch in. All right guys, we are almost done with this patch. All we have left to do is make sure that we're putting the patch in the wall the correct way. Remember we made that mark earlier, so make sure that's towards the top. And then we're just gonna squeegee our excess out of the patch by pulling from the center outward. And once we're done doing that, we're gonna let this layer dry and then we're gonna go ahead and do our second layer. All right. 
right, our first layer is dry. I did not have to sand that layer just because I really took my time with it and made sure everything was nice and smooth. But if you had to sand, just go ahead and sand down any high spots and work with your second layer. I went ahead and mixed up some more five minute mud and I'm getting it on the wall with a six inch blade and I'm really smoothing it out with this 10 inch blade. We're just gonna work our way around and try to feather those edges as best we can. Okay, so now that our second layer is dry, I'm just gonna sand down the middle some, and then I'm mostly gonna work on feathering those edges. If you need to add a third layer of mud, you totally can. Just uh, sand down like I'm doing here, and then add your third layer. I just needed to do the two, so I'm going to sand down the middle, sand down and feather the edges, and now I'm going around with a damp rag just to feather those edges even more. And I'm gonna put my first coat of paint directly on the patch, just because that raw drywall mud will really soak up that paint and then the second layer of paint will really blend everything together. Now of course the best thing to do here would be go over first with a layer of primer instead of going straight to paint like I'm doing but first layer should be primer and then two layers of paint. Only reason I'm doing paint here is just because it's a small example board and a lot of people I know don't use primer but it does yield better results so I would suggest doing a layer of primer and then two layers of paint. All right guys here we are with the final results it looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and show you the back side. There we go. And I use five minute mud. If uh, you've not worked with drywall before, definitely don't use five minute mud. I would use, if you're using a, a, a fast setting compound, at least a 20 minute mud, if not the 45. Um, the number refers to how long you have to work with it. So five is five minute mud. So um, I use the bag method. If you're interested in uh, what I was doing there, check out my other video. I have a no float drywall repair and uh, it really goes into detail of how to mix up the mud in a bag. It's not that complicated. And uh, if you were gonna do a bigger patch than this, consider putting a board across the back of it for stability. And this was, I mean, it turned out pretty good too. And I just decided to go with the smaller one for the video just because I feel like that's what most of you guys would be running into, like a doorknob or something like that. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe for more. Unbelievable. Inconceivable!